Now, this is an interesting problem that's asking us for trig ratios, but it's not showing us a triangle. And what you're going to have to do here is build your own triangle, and then once you have the triangle completed, then you can determine the six trig ratios. This is a common idea that you're going to be seeing a lot of in uh, the next couple of units with trigonometry, building your own triangle based on information that's not a picture. So here's what we have starting out. Sine of theta equals 3 fifths. So what I would do is just draw a right triangle. Okay, it really does not matter what shape you put on the triangle. Uh, pick an angle to be theta. Okay, you can't pick the right angle. We need a right angle. But theta is not a right angle. And I don't know, let's put it here. It, it honestly does not matter where you put theta. Now, you're building this right triangle such that sine of theta equals 3 fifths. Well, if you remember what sine is, right, that's opposite over hypotenuse. That means the opposite is 3, the hypotenuse is 5. Okay. And now we're really pretty close to having a complete triangle. We just need to fill in what that third side is. So I'm going to call that B and just say that, well, from Pythagorean, the Pythagorean theorem, we know that 3 squared plus B squared equals 5 squared. So that means 9 plus B squared equals 25. And that means B squared equals, <laughs> oh, look at that, 16. And that means B equals 4. Now, this worked out nicely. It won't always be like that. Sometimes you're going to get some crazy square root for B, and that's fine. Uh, we just happen to get lucky in this fraction right here. So now we'll, we'll take that information. Okay, I can get rid of that b and replace it with the number 4. And now we build our triangle, or, or we build our trig functions. So sine of theta, well, that's easy. That was actually given to us at the beginning. So I guess you could have gotten uh, one out of six parts of this right, even if you had no idea what you were doing. So great. Uh, the cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. That's 4 over 5. Tangent is 3 over 4. And now all that's left is these reciprocal functions. Just flip your fractions over and line them up right. So tangent goes with cotangent. That's going to be 4 thirds. Secant goes with cosine. So that'll be 5 over 4. And cosecant goes with sine. That'll be 5 over 3. And at this point, we're done. The important part, I would say, is just remembering how to build these reciprocal functions, right? Remember where these different things go.